Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. Welcome back. We missed you. We loved you. You're we so wonderful. We never went away. We, knew, we, we didn't go our away. Our last episode was two weeks ago. I know, but I I missed them. And this we're talking about compassion today. And I wanted to <laughs> set the stage Fair. With, with us being effusively in love with our audience. Effusively? All right, fine. We'll go with it. I, I, I believe you. Yeah. Um, yes, today's topic is compassion and the act of practicing it and sort of uh, weird philosophical thoughts about it. And, so many weird philosophical thoughts. Oh, man, we thoughts. got so far into the weeds in the pre-show. <laughs> but uh, icebreaker, straightforward thing. What is the most recent nice thing you did for somebody? On Saturday, I had D&D with some buddies. Nice. And uh, after d and oh, I knew you'd like that. Um... <laughs> We get we get ready to leave, and uh, so we're at my buddy's place, and uh, there was two of us uh, who were leaving. So I, I left with him, and basically I say goodbye. I go to my car, and he starts walking, and then I remember. I, I'm kind of like, oh, I probably should have offered him a ride. And then I'm like, wait a second. When he first came, or when we first started D&D, he made a reference to having to have walked an hour and 40 minutes to get there. And I'm like, that's a really long walk. I know what that's like, because I used to do something similar to that when I worked at Chainsaw and didn't have a car. I'd have to walk an hour and 20 minutes home from work yeah. at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this being the daytime, but I'm like, so I pull up alongside. I'm like, Charles, do you want to ride? You know, because, like you said, it's like an hour and 40 minutes. Like, do you want to walk home? And he goes, oh, no, no, it's fine. I was going to catch the bus. It's going to be 40 minutes. I'm like, yeah, but, like, I can get you home a little bit faster. So, he says, okay. So, he gets in the car, and we're driving, and... Uh, and the reason why this is compassionate in this regard is, uh, or at least why it was just a nice thing and it wasn't just on the way home, was we turned into the neighborhood and I we used to live in the same neighborhood before I moved. And yeah. and so I said, you know, the, I, I don't get me wrong, I like living with Sarah, but the only thing I would say is I miss living in this neighborhood. He goes, what, you moved? Which I guess shows that I'm not a really good friend if <laughs> he didn't know that I had moved. But uh, I said, yeah, no, I moved back in like March, April. He goes, oh, Oh, so this is the complete opposite direction of where you needed to go. And I hear this a lot when I give rides for, for my coworkers at the bar and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I have a car. The opposite direction is still within the city. It's not like I'm driving you to Toronto, which is legitimately out of my way. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just driving you here and then I'm going home. And, and so I would say that I'm not saying that it was a nice thing I did, but just because of his reaction, he thought I was just driving him home, which then would have been a really dick thing if I drove home in the same direction that he would have walked. Like that would have been a super dick. That would have been a super dick move. But yeah. so for him to think that I uh, I was giving him a ride because it happened to be on my way, I suppose counts as my nice thing. But okay, yeah. Uh, so I was walking to work, uh, you know, a week ago, it was raining, like, like, that hard summer, like, sheets of rain. Uh, I only live a couple blocks from work. Um, and I got to just about the end of my street, and I saw this dude, this older guy with an umbrella, he's kneeling down on the sidewalk, and he, and I'm like, and he's picking up sheets of paper from the like rainy sidewalk uh one of somebody's recycle bin had gotten overturned and there were just sheets of paper just stuck to the sidewalk mm-hmm. um and he, he was picking them up and it's definitely not his recycle bin because there's no houses there it's just like an apartment building in a church huh and i sort of like i slowed down because it was raining a lot I don't really care about getting wet, but and I slowed down and I and I, and I stopped. And I'm like nobody should have to pick up that like garbage in the rain by themselves. So I wandered over to him, and and I'm like, hey man, do you want do you want a hand? And and I mean it only took us like two minutes, three minutes to to pick it all up and get it back in the recycle bin. But I don't know. I feel good about when I see people doing nice things. I'm like, they shouldn't have to do that by themselves. Like some someone should help them. Mm-hmm. I'm someone. <laughs> Most days. Most days. So uh, yeah, I have no idea who he was. I like I went to work. He he went back home. Um, but and I don't know. That seems like the best part. Like this is this is my neighborhood, and I claim to love it. And part of 
I think what it means to love it is to to help make it clean and to and to to help people in my neighborhood when I see them um, not even in need of help but where where help would be useful mm-hmm. you know where they shouldn't have to to go it alone mm-hmm. and so it made me really happy and and I got to work a little late but filled with warm and fuzzy feelings mm-hmm. so what is compassion like when we talk about compassion like we spent a bunch of time sort of sort of digging into this and 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 trying to hash out a stricter definition because mm-hmm. uh, you talked about compassion as being related from to to sympathy and empathy yeah i mean good philosophical practice i suppose is is always going with defining your terms so to speak and so when we first when I first, I, I, I'm not going to lump you in with this, but when I first tried sketching out a definition, I said, "Well, I feel like I feel like it's somehow bound up in in the notions of sympathy and empathy." And at one point, I even sketched it out in terms of you have, you know, sympathy, which would be something akin to you know you feel for somebody or you feel for something, you know, you have emotion, an emotional state. Uh, empathy is. Um, being in somebody's shoes and feeling the same thing that they do mm-hmm. and it feels like compassion fits fits somewhere in the middle between the two of them more on the empathetic side than on the sympathetic side um, except when when I started expressing it in those terms and we started talking about examples of that it, uh, it kind of unraveled because uh, as we pointed out that feeling is not it's a, it's a necessary component to it, but it's not a sufficient component to it. There's much more going on, and you can have elements of empathy that don't overlap nicely with, with compassion. And it, we ended up f- figuring out that it has something to do with action, or that's yeah. somehow bound up in doing something rather than feeling something. Yeah, so I, 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 I think I, I parse compassion out as, as kind action that results from recognizing someone's personhood Mm -hmm. like it it involves seeing someone or a group of people like as people essentially Uh, whether that means struggling whether that means um, the you know the 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 you know the ways in which they require help or the ways or even just the ways in which help would be helpful Mm -hmm. Uh, or action would be helpful is probably a better way of framing that Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that there's there's a bunch of stuff that gets mixed up in the idea of of compassion as direct help. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we we teased out towards the end of the pre-show discussion was uh, compassion and kindness are related, uh, but you can be compassionate. Or it, they're not the same thing. Uh, kindness is doing nice things for other people, whereas compassion is doing something in recognition of that person. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would, I would maybe categorize it as or define it as like like trying to. Um, there's a distinction between being nice and trying to help. Yeah. Um, and there, and I think that the, that distinction is meaningful. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and 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 compassion means re- it means doing it out of re- by recognizing people's agency and personhood. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, and that carries with it the idea of honoring their wishes and respecting their will, mm-hmm. um, because it's going to take a lot of different shapes for a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. You know, I use the example of, of helping people out when they're stressed out. Some people want you to like sit and talk with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, or sit in silence, or leave them alone, and these are all like these are all valid, real ways of them articulating what they need. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it is, I think, a necessary condition of, of of compassion that when someone articulates what they need, you sort of, um, you know, in in situations where compassion is the most important thing, mm-hmm. and and compassion. Sort of toward them. There's a, there's a lot of structural entanglements here, mm-hmm. but that 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 is that that is respected. Like it, like if we if we disrespect that, then we aren't really recognizing them as a person. Mm-hmm. We're we're recognizing them as a prop that we sort of operate, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't seem like compassion. It seems much more akin to cruelty. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, 
<laughs> I love I love talking and thinking about like like I spend a lot of time thinking about um, compassion. There's a whole other podcast that comes out of this about compassion when related to like, structural issues and allyship, and we will probably do that podcast one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to move this book because it's going to fall down. <laughs> I can hear it. Um, this is my copy of Iron Spikes Poorcraft that I got from the Kickstarter. <laughs> um, it's a super cool book series, and I really want to write about it. I might. But... Anyway, yeah, I mean, so that leads us, I think, into demonstrating compassion. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, we when we tried to come up and perhaps if we miss something, you know, you are... We have one, 100% missed something. Yeah, you, are wonderful viewers, can let us know in the description, or the description, the comments down below. Um, but we tried to think of an example where you can be compassionate and not have an action associated with it. The only... Like, usually, compassionate people are described as compassionate because of the things they do, not the things they feel. Like, this this comes back to the reason why sympathy and empathy didn't go far enough with talking about it. Um, mm-hmm. The only, perhaps, fringe case that I brought up was the idea of a compassionate person. But, again, like, you... To, to describe somebody as a compassionate person is usually bound up because of the things that they do. So the description is less on the person and yeah. more on the things that like they do. Like if we were describing a person with really strong feelings, yeah. we would describe them as empathetic. Yeah. Like we have a word for that. Yeah, emotional, passionate, empathetic, but compassion seems like the wrong the wrong descriptor to throw on there to yeah. describe that particular description. And I, I would go further than that. I would say that... that it is never compassionate. It is never are not words that I use very lightly, but yeah. it is it is never the compassionate thing to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, because in some way, you know, like, like there are in there are indirect ways to, to show compassion. So we, we talked uh, briefly about the idea of like someone wants to be left alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are other ways to support people even when they want to be left alone. Yeah. There are other ways to like if the if if the reason for that is that they're really stressed out, then like there are ways to try and examine or rem- or or um adjust those stressors or try and remove barriers. Mm-hmm. I was using the example of doing people's dishes. Mm-hmm. I I'm the worst at doing my own dishes. My roommates will attest to this. Like I do I don't do them nearly often enough. Um, but if I am over at somebody's house, uh, whether if I'm babysitting or house sitting or, um, you know, like, and they, and they need some like time to themselves, I will almost always do their dishes Mm. unless it's like going to make things really weird. Um, cause it's my, it's my sort of like go to. Here's a nice thing that I can take off your plate, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that I'm in a position to do. That's sort of a like a low consequence, low stress thing. But it's a thing. It's it's here's a thing you don't have to deal with anymore, mm-hmm. at least today. Um, and there there are all kinds of of examples like that, like tidying or. I always use the thing from Babylon Five. There was a a, a, a minister. And uh, who, who gave a really good example of sort of compassion and kindness, and the the ways that it involves recognizing people. He said, he said, my when, when I was dating my my wife, um, she would always come over and she would clean my apartment, and and I would and I would say, why do you come over and clean my apartment? It's just like we your apartments also messy you can clean your apartment and she's like but when i clean my apartment all i've done is clean my apartment and when i clean your apartment when i help you clean your apartment i am helping you and that is the 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 meaningful difference and i'm like huh (laughs) i've been thinking about this for a long time (laughs) but yeah like like there are indirect opportunities for compassion, but even leaving someone alone 
is not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. It is respecting their will. Mm -hmm. It is it is recognizing um, their ability to testify and and assess their needs mm -hmm. and respecting that. Like again, doing doing otherwise sort of turns them into a prop. Mm -hmm. Like it isn't it isn't compassion. It's just sort of um, like it, it's it's action. And this ended up in the pre-show launching into an interesting conversation about accepting compassion, mm. because it seems like. There is, it's, it's uh, perhaps a, a better way, now that I think about it, a better way to think about it is, is like a compassion kill switch uh, or an override that basically says if somebody accepts, so in, in terms of accepting compassion, somebody does something nice for you. If you accept that they do something compassionate for you or something kind for you, um, that's fine. Uh, but if they do something for you that you don't in the moment recognize as compassionate, maybe you do down the line, but maybe you don't. Is it a still a compassionate thing in that moment? So for somebody to do something nice for you and you don't recognize it as nice necessarily in the moment, but afterwards you're like, oh, they were just trying to look out for me. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, they were doing something that really was in my best interest even if I didn't see it at that time. It's, it's, it's a, weird, a weird thing where if you don't see it as a kind thing, if you see it as obtrusive or not respecting my verbal wishes... Mm -hmm. That that somehow it that it overrides it. That is not compassionate. I don't think that's true. You don't I, think that's true? Um, I do think it's complicated. <laughs> um, I, like upon upon a moment's reflection, I do think it's complicated. Yeah. But I think no, I think that there that is perfectly reasonable. I like, guess somebody who's really bad at taking compliments. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I used the example in the pre-show of somebody at work complimenting you know, my my haircut one time. But uh, the, the, I realize a much better example is every once in a while uh, when I play an open mic, uh, someone will come up to me after my, my, my little set and they'll be like, wow, that was really good. And like not to toot my own horn, but sometimes it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, so so good that but, you and Kaylee but, are selling copies of that. Yeah, yes, yeah, so good that you can buy our album uh, in the link in the in the show notes below. Uh, Make each other brave by Wootsuit Riot, a live recording from Nerdfest 2017. Uh, <laughs> ding. Um, but uh, but. No, like my immediate response to that is to just completely freak out. Mm -hmm. I once like carried on a brief conversation, then walked across the coffee shop to get a muffin that I didn't want, but turned out to be delicious. <laughs> because I was just like, I have to extricate myself from this. Even though, like, this person is being entirely positive, they're being super cool about it, they're not like being weird or mean or obtrusive. Like they're genuinely I, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't I don't know that I would I would classify it as compassion, but they're certainly being nice mm -hmm. and pleasant. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I have no plan for how to deal with this. Um so I think it's it's it it matters like 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 the notion that we don't recognize it in the moment doesn't pre shouldn't prevent it from being Mm -hmm. Compassion, but I think that's complicated because sometimes compa like, like compassion or or direct compassion um, is not the way to go. Uh, actually, I have a really good example from this past weekend. So I went to a play, um, "Loving White People Is Hard." Uh, it was the name of the play. I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, the The run is has now finished, but it will hopefully return. Um, and, and it's a play that, that sort of deeply interrogates uh, not just white supremacy, but the, the sort of complicity of, of people in white supremacy. And uh, Janice Lee, the, the protagonist and main character and writer and singer and everything else, um, she, she said, when I, see, when, we, when I see something racist happen, I don't need you as white people to come and tell me that's fucked up. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I need you as white people to intervene 
in that thing. That is like that is the you know so the, the like there's a sense in which it can be hard to get a grip on what compassion is, and it's a sen- it's a sense in which but there's also a sense in which directly trying to look out for somebody is not the correct thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that. Like this, this is I have I have begun down this road, and I realize <laughs> now that I've gotten this far that it's terrifyingly tangled. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I think that that there are situations in wh- where indirect compassion matters more, mm-hmm. um, and that it, recognizing when people are trying to be compassionate can be important, but mm-hmm. it is not necessarily the most important thing. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it negates the nature of that compassion. Like, um, I guess the question in, in, in the example of, like, you know, racist aggressions and things like that is uh, when you when you come to, you know, your queer friend and, and you're like, yeah, I was really fucked up. Are you recognizing them as a person who is affected by that? Mm-hmm. Or are you recognizing a situation that you need to articulate your feelings about? Mm-hmm. Because um, the former is welcome, the, the latter is. Yeah, the 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 latter the latter is I mean is, is sort of whatever. Yeah, um, but it doesn't like. It doesn't Thanks ad- for joining the conversation. Yeah, it doesn't address the the thing that happened. Yeah. So, but but and and I will admit that I am I am very bad at at, at sort of recognizing people's attempts to to be compassionate until like an hour later when I'm like. Oh, they were being nice to me. Oh, that's really cool. I should have figured that out before. <laughs> I have a I have a related but different uh, example of of um, problems with <laughs> accepting compassion. I was gonna say maybe give us one that isn't as charged with social issues. Yeah, no, no, um, and uh, perhaps this is this is self serving, I suppose. But um, but I realized in talking about this that it's a it's a same. It, it falls under the same category of uh, having problems with accepting compassion. Um, in my case, the example that relates to me comes from the relationship side of things of giving yourself permission to accept the compassion of somebody else. Mm. So in a relationship, and this this isn't just strictly um, significant others. I suppose relation like very deep close relationships with other people. Um, anybody can experience this, but I'm thinking about specifically in the case of me and my fiance of she still sometimes has to explicitly tell me, right, it's okay for me to do nice things for you because there's a horrible double, double standard in my mind of like, I will, I want to like go out of my way to do nice things for her. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, give her massages after work or, you know, go and do ch- chores and house, which I know, I know oh. if she's going to be watching this, she's also going to be like, says the guy who sits on, you know, reading instead of vacuuming or something. Like, obviously, obviously I'm dropping the ball in a number of different ways, but there are lots of times when I will do things for her that I would like her to do back for me, but I don't expect her to do back to me. Like, you know, for example, like, I don't ask her to massage my shoulders if, like, I'm really tense up in here. Or I'm disappointed like because we've been doing a podcast for four years and you've never massaged my shoulders. Well, I think, uh, you know, actually, you know, after Scotland, we should be that close. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to say, you know, maybe we've never been that close. But no, we were, we spent time in Scotland together. I think we were pretty close. We, we were, we were you climb the Wallace Monument with a man. Exactly. You know him thoroughly. Yeah. We experienced the quickening together. Um, and, and so it, it's it's a different flavor of that idea. In my case, I have a hard time giving myself permission to accept the compassion of others, maybe because I desire to be a stoic, because that is what a man does, because I'm a hypocrite. I don't know. There's probably a bunch of different ways to. No, to, I, like, to I, 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 I totally get that. Like, and I, I do think it's I do think it's sort of bound up in toxic masculinity in a lot of yeah. ways. Because I, I definitely get that too, where I'm like, no, 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 no. no. I do nice things for people. People don't do nice things for me. Actually, a perfect example for you, like my my, what I'm saying for you is you accepting rides from people. So I have the staunchest, most ironclad pedestrian pride. I will walk home in the apocalypse rather than ask for someone to drive me home. Mm-hmm. I, I 
I will walk three hours to get to something that's out of the way of the bus rather than rather than even daring to suggest that someone I know might help me out. Um, if I offer a ride, I may accept, but only if I am feeling magnanimous. Not toward myself, of course, but to you, the driver. And it's like it's just the most bullshit thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it, it's a way that, that that like my my sort of my sort of pride and manliness get caught up and interfere with my ability to to be like no, like people are being nice to me because they they like me and then like not just because they they like me or are nice to me but in the way that you parsed it out in the icebreaker like this is a small thing for them Mm -hmm. and they understand that it is a big thing for me and they are trying to look out for me and save me time and energy and all kinds of stuff Mm -hmm. as you said they're not trying to lord it over you yeah like they're not trying to be dicks about it i mean if someone was like, yes, I will drive you home as long as you acknowledge the superiority of the motor vehicle, then I would probably not accept that unless it was really far or raining a lot. Yeah. But normally I'm like, no, rain, no rain nor sleet, nor snow, etc. And so I think that you are not incorrect when you, when you, you, you parse that out as like a symptom of masculinity, mm-hmm. you know? I am the agent. Mm-hmm. You are the acted upon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think... Now, now stay with me on this because I just thought of it, mm-hmm. but uh, I think part of accepting compassion is recognizing the, a- the agency, like recognizing the personhood of the person who is trying to provide it. And again, that isn't always the most relevant consideration. Mm-hmm. Um... But like it is, it is, it is. I think it, at least for me, in in practice, valuable to sort of try and recognize people's intentions, and uh, even even if they get it, even if they get it wrong, often they get it wrong because I'm really weird. Yeah, I'm idiosyncratic. I suppose. I suppose I could see what but, that is. But like, I I can I can recognize them as sort of what they are trying to do. And that is how I can that, like that. Is, that to me is the start of having a conversation about what in this situation. Like, like I mean, we we did a podcast about panic attacks. It's mm-hmm. like in when I am having a panic attack, what do I need, mm-hmm. and how is that different from what other people need? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, like a person who is acting out of compassion is trying to give you what you need. Yeah. And trying to to listen and recognize what that is, and then provide that. Whether that's something as simple as a ride, or something as complicated as um, relieving stress, or something as even more complicated as 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 being an accomplice in resistance. Mm-hmm. And and so there's a whole million ways that that unpacks. But, <laughs> Suffice to say. In one tiny little podcast, we haven't even begun to unravel it. But, (laughs) I mean, I I hope to, when I am 100 years old, have figured it out. But um, I can can probably say that it 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 is rarely inadvisable to attempt to act with compassion uh, and to learn from those attempts. Mm -hmm. But... uh, and there's damn few of it. <laughs> there's damn little of it in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That'll do us for today. Yeah. You can find us on Twitter at Woodsuit or on Facebook or on Patreon because we have Patreon now. Mm-hmm. You can find Huck on Twitter at RJ Huckle mm-hmm. or me on Twitter at Concept Crucible because I stole the name for the blog. <laughs> Links and always yes, well. as always in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. Leave your compassionate notes in the comments. Tell us about nice things you did because they make me really happy. And uh, go and be excellent to one another, which is perhaps the best sort of mantra of of uh, acting on compassion. If not like the greatest of life mantras, it in very it at least hits that note really squarely. So I'm Jim. 
I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome.